Send in the soldier that won't make a sound. Here's your look at the Hasbro G.I. Joe Classified Series. This is Snake Eyes. G.I. Joe is a highly skilled, on-demand, special operations force of men and women from around the globe. These extraordinary, talented heroes are selected for their elite abilities and tasked with defending the world from Cobra, a ruthless criminal organization bent on total domination. With unwavering courage and steely determination, the brave members of G.I. Joe are prepared to seek out Cobra in any environments on the planet, from hostile jungles to ice-clad arctic peaks. Wherever there's trouble, G.I. Joe is there. Before we get into the review of good old Snake Eyes, the first thing we're going to do is calculate just how tall this figure actually stands. Using my trusty digital tape measure, I'm going to take it right to the very top of his head. And while I'm doing that, I'd also like to send out a big thank you to the folks over at Hasbro who made this review possible. They sent over a media pack containing the entire first wave of G.I. Joe classified series figures, therefore allowing me the opportunity to fi finish off the, the wave by getting Destro and Snake Eyes, two figures that still eluded me completely. If you're in the market of picking these ones up for yourself, though, you should be able to find them through various online sites and retail stores, as the first wave of classified series figures, as far as I know, are pretty easy to come by. Checking out the tape measure readout, though, you're looking at Snake Eyes' height standing at 6.2 inches in height. Switching that to centimeters one more time, there we go. You're looking at the figure being almost 16 centimeters, 15.9 to be exact. And considering that this is technically the last figure of the first wave, let's bring in some of the other figures that we had a look at just for some size comparisons. All the figures that I'm bringing in currently, like I said, I've already done reviews of. So if you are new to the channel or just didn't know I covered off all the G.I. Joe classified series figures, I would encourage you at your available time to go back and have a look at all my previous reviews. You can see what I thought of each one of these figures. Let's just go ahead and straighten out Duke's feet. For some strange reason, Duke's feet just doesn't want to there we go. Just does not want to stand straight. There we go. Bringing in also Scarlet. And then the last figure we just recently had a look at, there's Destro. And that makes up the first wave of figures. Yeah, I still feel bad for Destro. Poor, poor Destro is still by himself. That hopefully will be changing. We've already seen images surface of a Cobra Commander, as well as I think we're also getting a Cobra Trooper and a Baroness. And hopefully, again, they can continue to expand out these classified series. Because so far, based on what I'm seeing these with these figures, I'm really liking the line so far. Let's go ahead and tackle the figure's accessories. It comes with a total of six, if you could believe it. We'll start with the largest one. And of course, the thing that sort of you can add stuff onto. He comes included with a backpack. As you can see, the backpack primarily is all done in black with some silver accents where it's been, he has these little fasteners on the side and located on the top as well. In previous instances, we've seen backpacks be hollow, but this is not the case here with a classified series. These are a good, solid, dense plastic. I really like that. And you can see that some nice detailing done to the backpack itself. There's a, a plug located on the back, so you could probably already guess where this is going to go. But before you do that, don't jump ship too quickly to think that you can just put it in place. First thing you want to do first is line up the bandolier. As you can see, it has its own independent hole. I suppose, if anything, you could probably just attach the backpack without lining these two up. And it's simply the case where the bandolier would run a little looser. If you do want to tighten up shop a little bit better, though, line the holes up just like that. And then from there, take the peg located on the back of the backpack and feed it not only through the bandolier, but then also through to the torso hole as well. One good thing about doing it this way is that it keeps then the bandolier tight. It, it will move still up and down, but it'll prevent it from shifting around on you. Certainly that you don't want to have that happen. But then you got these holes. Well, this hole right here. What purpose does that serve? Well, let's just put the figure down here for a second. As there's certainly some more to talk about. We can talk about, for example, the sheath. Uh, as you can see, the sheath is done all in black. It will, of course, hold a provided katana that will also come with include with the figure. So not really so much a katana, it's just a blade sword. 
Uh, look at it on the top though, as you can probably see, is the logo, the mark of the Rashikagi, or Rashikaji, depending on how you'd like to pronounce it. It's a couple of different ways that I've heard been said of this particular marker, but it's the marker, of course, that both Storm Shadow and Snake Eyes uh, carry along with them. It's located on both sides. It's painted nicely also in red, so it does stand out. The rest of the sheath has almost like a leather look to it. Really nice the way that they've done that. There's actually an opening also on the bottom that will allow the blade of the sword to feed past the point of the sheath. Let's have a look at that right now. To come included, he also gets himself the sword. And I know I said before it's a katana. It's not really quite a katana. It has a different edge on the blade, as you can see on the bottom there. It still has, as you can see also, the Arashikagi logo, a little marker there on the top, although it's not painted red like this one here, as you can see. Um, located on the back, on, there, on the either side, maybe it's not actually, it does look like it's the Arashikagi, maybe it, no it is, it's just not, like I said, painted in red. Uh, then you just go ahead and line the two up, feed the sword inside the sheath, and there you go. Just quickly want to show you the handle as well. The hilt of the sword is so nicely detailed. For a second, I almost felt like I was going to forget talking about it. I really like the way that they've sculpted that. Either way, though, you can hold the sword, obviously, in Snake Eyes' hands, or you can house it inside the sheath. Either case, though, there's a couple of different ways, again, you can display this. There's a hole located that we already talked about on the side of the backpack. You just feed that onto the side if you wanted to. And just push that down. Now this is fine if you want to display Snake Eyes with both the backpack and the sword, but let's just say you want to go just the sword. Well, what you can also do too is just remove this. Oh, before we actually do that, there's one other thing I wanted to talk about. Just remove the sword, the sheath for the time being. We'll put the figure down for one more second. I know I keep putting the figure back down. He also comes with a really interesting looking blaster. The reason why I wanted to quickly talk about this is because there's a hole that goes right through the top of it, and what's that for? Before we do that, though, as you can see, it's cast all in black plastic with its own individual peg. So what you can actually do, a couple of different, like I said, there's a couple of different ways to go about doing this. You can attach the weapon, just located on the side, and plug this in place. It just feeds into that hole like so. Just feed that in, pop it in place. And then technically, you can then take the sheath of the sword and feed that in as well. Sort of doubling up, stacking, if you will, things on top of things. And it kind of allows you to then house everything that's on the figure, except for, of course, the knife and the smaller his pistol that we'll look at in a second. But you, you can also do it a couple of other ways as well. Pop this off completely, remove the backpack, and again, you can either go, like, let's just say we'll take the blaster. The blaster can go independently on its own on his back, just like that. And then you can also take the sword and take the sheath and just feed it through that hole like we had done before. And you can sort of alternate it too. Put it like on an angle from itself. So you can kind of go something like this as well. Or, sound like I'm an infomercial, you can also remove this, just like that. And then just go simply just the sword. Like I said, there's a couple of different options available. I wanted to show you all of them if possible. There you go. You can just do the sword if you wanted to. I kind of like the idea of honestly displaying him with the backpack with the sword located to the side of it. But again, with the customization available, you can come, come up with a couple of your own different designs for the way that you want to display the figure. One last time, one last time, I promise. I'm just going to put the figure down here for one second. Two other accessories he comes included with is a hunting knife. Small in size and only cast in the black plastic. You can have that either held in his hand or you can fit that also into the holster on the side of his leg. He also comes included with a pistol, which also has that same hole. Oh, you can kind of see how customization works here. Now this can also attach to the side of the blaster. I'm not really sure why you would want to, but again, if you wanted to, you can attach the two like so. You can kind of have two guns together. Um, this smaller gun, just remove it from the larger one, there we go, has a removable silencer. Just pop that right off, like so. Now, even this has its own storage compartment. Let's just, let's have a look at that right now. Move his arm out of the way, and on the side, he's got a holster located on the side of his leg. You can take, then, the pistol and feed that down the side of his leg into the holster. And then on the front, there's actually a hole where you can take, then, the silencer and feed that through as well. From there, you can then move the arm out of the way on the other side, 
and then take the knife and do the exact same thing on this side. This is a case where this figure holds everything within reason, of course. It, it's entirely up to you how you want to configure the back of it. But in some ways, it really will allow you to kind of hold everything, and then he still has some hands to spare. That's really neat, the way that they've done all that. I'm going to go ahead and remove this just for the time being, because I know that's going to shift around and move around while I'm trying to look at the rest of the figure, and we'll just sort of put the accessories out of the way for the time being. Having a look at the figure's head sculpt, it certainly is classic Snake Eyes. Uh, Snake Eyes has had some changes, but for the most part, he generally keeps to this sort of design. The head sculpt is kind of reminding me of the sequel of G.I. Joe, the live action movie that we got. I know we don't tend to want to speak about that, with specifically the little vented areas on the front of his helmet. You can see the visor is still classic Snake Eyes. I do notice that there's a little bit of red on the top of this one, and I tried to check it against images online, and I don't know if that red is supposed to all be on that on every single finger that we've gotten, but I did notice that it's on the top of mine. It's just right there. Of course, he does brand himself very much so with the Arasha Kaiji uh, logo. He's got it on here, he's got it on the belt area, and he also has it on the sheath that we've already had a look at. I uh, like the fact that they've got it specifically on his belt. I don't know if I would have put it right there. I just feel like maybe that's too many, but I certainly like the fact that they've got it on his belt here, which, as you can see, is a separate piece. It does shift around a bit back and forth. Uh, the bandolier does also have a few grenades, none of which are removable, none of which, thank goodness, are ones that actually work. But it's nice the fact that they actually did sculpt these little tiny grenades on the front of it. Uh, he's primarily all black for the most part, though some of the black does change. Specifically, when you look at the front of his helmet, front of his mask, depending on how you want to describe it, it's more matte on the front, or this strip area here is matte black. However, the side of it's you sort of got this crescent moon shape of a more shinier black, which seems to be the same sort of coloring that he has for the rest of his body. Actually, most, if not all, his body is the more shinier nature of black. With he's got a little few red markers there, like, for example, on his elbow pads. Doesn't have anything in the knees, but uh, like I say, he's got a few little silver uh, snaps where the side holsters will be snapped onto his leg. Um, like I said, this does this does shift around a little bit. It's the one thing I'm not as keen about, the idea that these move around as much as they do. Just because when you are picking up and moving the figure, this just shifts around a little bit more from more than what I actually like. Noticing, I'm sure, one accessory that's completely omitted from Snake Eyes, he doesn't have timber. I hope down the road that we're going to be getting ourselves another classified series of Snake Eyes. Maybe we could even get the one, the fan nod, with the little mouth sculpted into his mask, and we could get ourselves a timber to come included with that. Uh, overall, I just really like the design on this one. Like I said with Destro, and I'm sure I've said with a couple of them already, they haven't changed and reinvented the wheel at all. This is classic Snake Eyes. They've simply just taken the design of Snake Eyes that I already liked and just brought them up a size of, or two from the three and three quarter inch that we've gotten before. Having a look at this guy's articulation, his head rotates all the way around. Sadly, there are a few little things on this particular figure that are a little on the loose side, primarily like his head, for example. He does have a ball joint at the base of the neck, and then he has a ball joint at the top of the neck as well. So not only can you rotate the head all the way around this way, but you can also rotate the head back and forth at the base of the neck as well. It's just a shame, like on mine, this head's is a little on the loose side. You can almost, you can almost flick it back and forth. I'm going to see if I actually I can pop the head off, maybe thicken by adding a little bit of nail polish or floor polish to that ball joint, just to make it a little bit bigger than what it is currently. I'm wondering if I can maybe tighten up the head a little bit so it's not as loose as what it currently is. The shoulders hinge out, no problems at all going on there. It hinges out to almost about a 90 degree angle bend. And in addition to that, something I almost forgot to mention with Destro, he does have the cup socket joint as well, allowing the arms to sort of rotate in a little bit more than they did before. Same as well when you want to rotate the arms outward. You see that little joint happening there behind the scenes. But like I said, the arms rotate all the way around as well. He has a swivel at the bicep. As well, he has a double hinge on the elbow with some additional articulation happening in the hand. You can hinge that back and forth as well. He has an upper torso crunch, which unfortunately on this figure is a bit on the loose side. He has a waist swivel as well. 
legs split out, no care, no fuss, no muss happening, I should say, with the holsters. They're good enough at least to be lower down on the leg. That when you do hinge the leg out, if you want to give, say, snake eyes the splits, it seems like the holsters stay out of the way. Not to mention as well that with these figures, they have a drop down of their legs where you can bring them down and give you a little extra clearance to move those legs outward, forward and back as well. And then when you just want to put them back, just pop them back up into the sockets. He doesn't have any swiveling other than just the way he's connected to the ball joint at the top. However, he does have a double hinge on the knee. It's just a little tighter on this particular figure. He has a rotation on the boots where it's attached to the rest of his leg. And then he has foot articulation as well, hinging up and down and rocking back and forth. I feel like the classified series figures would be missing Snake Eyes. Snake Eyes always seems to be the type of Joe that gets thrown in when you do that first wave of figures. I'm glad to see that we did get Snake Eyes with the first wave, but it's not to say I'm sure that we won't be getting more Snake Eyes, as he's had several different designs in the toy line, the original uh, toy line back in the day. I'm certainly sure that Hasbro is probably going to be approaching the idea of releasing Snake Eyes in various different costumes and various different colors as well. Snake Eyes for me is a lot like Optimus Prime, in the sense that when we do get a new Transformers toy line, Optimus Prime you tend to see very much at the front of the line, or second in line perhaps now to Bumblebee. But Snake Eyes is a lot like that as well. It's not to say that the G.I. Joe Classified series would be any bit less by excluding Snake Eyes, but it does feel more like a rounded out G.I. Joe line when you do include good old Snake Eyes. This particular figure benefits from having so many additional accessories to him, more than, say, some of the others that we've seen from this first wave. I like also that all the accessories seem, for the most part, to be able to attach onto the figure, and nothing is sitting loose and idly by. Snake Eyes overall is a nice, detailed-looking figure, not changing too much, which, again, is the one thing I'm liking so much about this line, is that they don't reinvent the wheel. This is the way Snake Eyes is when I grew up watching him both in the cartoon and collecting him in the original toy line. And why feel the need now to change him and make, make him into something that he isn't? It's not to say that Snake Eyes hasn't changed his look over the years. Remember that costume that was blue and silver? You never know, we probably will see him surface at some point under the classified line. But I'm glad when it came to a release of Snake Eyes in a 6-inch form... Hasbro kept to the basics, made them all black clad, and short of the fact that they omitted poor Timber, maybe Timber will be released down the road with maybe a Snake Eyes version too. A big thank you again to the folks over at Hasbro who took the time and sent the Snake Eyes, as well as the other figures from the first wave of G.I. Joe Classified series. Again, if you're in the market to pick these ones up for yourself, you should be able to find these through various retail stores and online stores as well. Let me know down below what you guys think of this particular figure, and let me know what your favorite figure was from the first wave of G.I. Joe Classified series. Really liking this line so far. If you guys are also new to the channel and you're liking the content that you're seeing, consider the idea of hitting that subscribe button down below and turning the bell notification on. Just again an FYI that new videos come to this channel Monday to Friday at 12 p.m. and 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Going to have a whole bunch of new videos coming your way, so keep your peepers peeled for those. And thanks for watching. I'll see you guys next time.